Welcome back to Wrestling Flash. In this WWE and all things wrestling video we are going to look at. Nia Jax attacks Roman Reigns, the best and worst of SmackDown. Sasha Banks spotted happier for the first time since her Raw walkout. Roman Reigns breaks silence after helping the Usos become undisputed WWE Tag Team Champion, and more. First let's look at the best and worst of SmackDown. The latest SmackDown episode is in the books, and as always, it's time for another edition of the best and worst. The men and women on the blue brand brought their a game tonight as the show featured some big moments. WWE is busy setting the stage for Hell in a Cell, with certain ongoing storylines witnessing a few twists. While there were several positive takeaways, SmackDown also had some downfalls. On that note, let's take a look at what worked and what didn't from the May 20th episode of SmackDown. Number 3. Best – The Tag Team Title Unification Main Event This week SmackDown had a premium live event feel with the title unification match as the headline. The Usos created history by unifying the Raw and SmackDown tag titles by defeating RK-Bro. While the match was satisfactory, the booking made it even better as it was sensible from multiple perspectives. For starters, the Usos had to win to add to Bloodline's unbeatable aura. The Samoan faction looked phenomenal while celebrating with six belts after the SmackDown main event. WWE made all the right decisions while focusing on the immediate futures of the Bloodline and RK-Bro. In addition to the Usos' victory, WWE also smartly planted the seeds for the rise of a promising challenger for Roman Reigns. The Tribal Chief interfered in the match and shoved Riddle off the top rope before Jay's match-winning Frog Splash. The angle seemed to set up Riddle vs. Reigns for Money in the Bank, which sounds like a potential show-stealer. Number 2. Worst, Butch vs. E. Xavier Woods While we enjoy watching Xavier Woods and Butch perform, it's getting tiresome to watch the exact match on repeat for weeks. New Day's feud with Sheamus, Rich Holland, and Butch has been going on for an eternity. To make matters worse, WWE isn't planning on pulling the plug on the angle either, as this was Woods and Butch's third singles match on SmackDown since the first week of April. It seems that WWE writers are running out of ideas for the storyline while fans are out of patience. It's not beneficial for the talent involved as they aren't getting favorable reaction. The company is working towards a six-man tag team match, and we hope it marks the end of this unnecessarily long story. Number 2. Best the beginning of Gunther vs. Ricochet. As seen on SmackDown, Gunther steamrolled past Drew Gulak and unleashed a post-match attack after his win. Ricochet confronted the former NXT UK champion and effectively kicked off their feud. WWE seldom gets things right with one of its secondary titles. To the promotion's credit, the officials are heading in the ideal direction with the Intercontinental Championship. From a stylistic standpoint, Gunther vs. Ricochet is a bona fide dream match. Ricochet requires strong opponents for the fans to talk about his reign. A storyline with Gunther is fresh and could possibly spawn some classic matches between the superstars. The one and only's unmatched aerial prowess is a perfect match for Gunther's hard-hitting offense, and we can't wait to see them produce magic at a high-profile WWE event. The whole angle could get even more interesting if Gunther captures the championship. Number 1. Best, Worst, Ella Knight debuts on SmackDown as Max Dupree. It's getting difficult to keep track of Sean Rickers in ring names. Impact Wrestling fans knew him as Lee Drake. NXT viewers grew to love him as Ella Knight. WWE's main roster audience has now been introduced to his new avatar, Max Dupree. Almost every NXT talent undergoes a name change before their call-up, and that's the biggest reason Ella Knight, Max Dupree's debut also feels a little odd. On SmackDown, he was unveiled as the CEO of Maximum Male Models, which means that he will most likely be a manager. However, the man behind the gimmick is a gifted performer both in and outside the ring. The 39-year-old astonishingly got over with a comical name like Ella Knight in NXT. We're pretty confident that Max Dupree is still a more acceptable alternative, and he won't have any problems making the best of what's given to him. The former Impact Wrestling world champion has waited a long time to get to the WWE main roster, and despite the strange presentation, Max Dupree could become a popular name among SmackDown fans. Roman Reigns breaks silence after helping the Usos become undisputed WWE Tag Team Champion. This week's episode of WWE SmackDown saw the fulfillment of Roman Reigns' command to the Usos. Jimmy and Jay defeated RK-Bro to unify the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Championships, following which the Tribal Chief sent a strong message on Twitter. Reigns played a significant role in his cousins picking up the victory, holding Jay's feet on the top rope to prevent a Super RKO from Riddle. This allowed Uso to hit a massive Uso splash for the win. All three members of the Bloodline viciously assaulted RK-Bro after the match before posing with all their titles as SmackDown went off air. Following this, Roman Reigns sent a strong message that leaves no doubt over who the top dogs in WWE are. The head of the table hinted that he and the Usos have been unstoppable since day one, especially now that they all hold two belts. Unstoppable. Undisputed. From day one. Acknowledge us. Alongside Jimmy and Jay, Roman Reigns choked out both Riddle and Randy Orton after their defeat to the Usos on SmackDown. 
This was likely done to set up the undisputed WWE Universal Champion's next two title defenses. In the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer reported that the current plan is for the Tribal Chief to defend his world title against Riddle at Money in the Bank on July 2nd. He would then take on Orton four weeks later at SummerSlam. WWE fans could be gearing up for an exciting summer, as they will want to see RK-Bro exact revenge on the bloodline. Both matches are expected to deliver well, considering the level of talent involved. Meltzer added that Drew McIntyre is penciled in as Roman Reigns' opponent for Clash at the Castle in the United Kingdom, although that could change if Tyson Fury is part of the show. Time will tell how things pan out for him and the Usos. Sasha Banks spotted happier for the first time since her Raw walkout. Sasha Banks was recently spotted having a great time at a concert, mere days after her walkout on WWE Raw. On this week's Raw, Sasha Banks and Naomi walked out after handing their women's tag team titles to John Laurinaitis. Judging by WWE's response following the walkout, the company is not happy with their action. A Twitter user has shared a video from last night's Steve Aoki concert. The boss can be seen having a blast at the concert. Judging by the clip, Sasha doesn't seem too bothered about what has transpired over the past few days and hasn't reacted to her raw walkout in any capacity. Fans who have kept up with the story are aware that WWE recently suspended Banks and Naomi following their walkout on Raw. Veteran WWE announcer Michael Cole took a shot at the duo during tonight's episode of SmackDown, stating that they let everyone down. Several pro wrestling personalities have commented on this fiasco over the past few days. Corey Graves, who took a jibe at the two stars during Raw, had the following to say about the situation. I would love to dive into this conversation because it set the internet on fire. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody has a point of view. I don't know enough facts about what actually went down to speak on it with any confidence. All I know is what you guys know. I was getting updates throughout the show on Monday, as needed, because we were doing a show. Sasha Banks and Naomi have received massive support from the WWE Universe ever since their Raw walkout. However, some fans are siding with WWE and believe that Banks' Naomi has crossed the line with their actions. What do you think? Do you believe Sasha Banks and Naomi's actions were justified? Former WWE champion allegedly got heavily buried and punished for refusing to lose to Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is one of the biggest names to ever step into the WWE ring. However, his first run with the company in 2002 had its ups and downs. Lesnar was pushed almost immediately after debuting and ran through half the roster. But former WWE champion Stone Cold Steve Austin refused to lose to Lesnar on an episode of Raw and walked out instead. During the Attitude Era, Steve Austin was the biggest star in WWE and did not see a point in losing to a rookie in a one-off match on Raw. He has stated that he wouldn't have had a problem putting Lesnar over if the build was right and it served a storyline purpose. As for Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Stone Cold was heavily buried and punished for walking out on Raw, primarily because the company did not have any competition. WWE doesn't treat its top names like that anymore as they fear that the talent may leave for EW. WWE suspended Steve Austin without pay in 2002 for refusing to come to TV for a match he was to lose to Brock Lesnar, but that came at a time when they were the only real game in town. They also buried him heavily, far more than would be the case here, which also was a terrible idea and short-sighted, said Meltzer. In a recent interview with Pat McAfee, Brock Lesnar spoke about never getting in the ring with Stone Cold. He said that he understood Austin's point and could see why he didn't want to do it. I understand from a business aspect, Lesnar said. At the time Steve left and you know, didn't want to work with me and it was probably the right decision for him at the time. You know, I don't hold a grudge against it at all. Business is business, I got that right away. I had a lot of good mentors, you know, coming up in the business. Dave Meltzer also stated that WWE made a big mistake by burying Steve Austin as it diminished his star power. When he did return to the company, he wasn't as big a draw as he was before he left. Nia Jax attacks Roman Reigns Former WWE superstar Nia Jax has taken a jibe at Roman Reigns in one of her latest Instagram stories. Nia Jax has been let go by WWE for a while now. She was quite vocal about the same and revealed that WWE released her after she requested an extension to her mental health break. Jax recently took to her Instagram stories to answer a bunch of fan questions. A fan asked Jax if she recognized Roman Reigns. Jax was blunt in her response and stated that she doesn't. At Survivor Series 2020, Nia Jax and Lana were supposed to do a table spot during the 10-woman Survivor Series elimination. Unfortunately for the duo, Reigns had plans to do a table spot as well in his match with Drew McIntyre. Here's what Lana had to say about the incident. We were supposed to do this whole table spot on the show. And then Roman did not want it, cause he had a table spot with Drew McIntyre. So there was some major pushback. The Samones, Nia and Roman, you know, that whole thing. Like, oh my god, I'm caught in the middle of this drama. And so, we had a huge spot. Like I was supposed to be laid out in the very beginning. I was supposed to get in the ring, and Nia snatched me, cause the whole point was everyone on the team were heels. 
and I was the only baby face, and they're gonna be all against me, and she was gonna lay me out, said Lana. Reigns has consistently been WWE's top star for several years now. He is the biggest heel on WWE TV today. Millions of Reigns fans as well as his peers acknowledge his stature. Jax seemingly isn't one of them, if her response on Instagram is any indication. What are your thoughts on Jax's comments? Do you think there's still some heat between her and Reigns?